Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Ominous and today I will review the fourth album by the alternative rock band, indie rock, alternative country rock band, experimental rock, art rock band, uh, Wilco. This is their album Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, their Magnum Opus album. And I didn't really uh, hear about this album a lot because Wilco is a pretty low-key band, I would say. Like, you have some really big alt-rock names out there. You know, your Arcade Fires, your Radioheads, your... Who else is out there? 2000s, the Strokes, I guess. Arctic Monkeys. Those are the big bands, I suppose. And Wilco is really low-key, I would say. Um, yeah, they never really caught my ear, I would say, because... They did just didn't really sound interesting to me, but this album, however, was really something else. Uh, this is seen at their, you know, their Magnum Opus, like I said. Their, you know, their big acclaim to fame, I would say. So this was a big album for the band. Um, it was released in 2001, so it was probably their first 2000s album. I'm not sure. Uh, got an 87 on Metacritic, that's really impressive. It got widespread acclaim, all music rates 5 stars. Entertainment Weekly A-, Pitchfork gives it 10 out of 10. Rolling Stone Album Guide gives it 5 stars. Rolling Stone itself gives it 4 stars. I don't really get it, honestly. Rolling Stone is retarded. Uh, the rest of the people gave it 8 out of 10, 4 stars. So everyone was quite positive about the record. We have 11 songs, 51 minutes and 51 seconds, so there we go. Uh, the first, yeah, and all lyrics are written by Jeff Tweedy, who is, I think, the frontman. That's usually how it goes. The frontman writes all, all the songs, all the hits, I suppose. Um, yeah, the first track is I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, which is a very good ranging, very emotional track. Starts off very mellow, very uh, just acoustic and relaxing to listen to very great opening track it's almost seven minutes long i thoroughly enjoyed this track it's very melancholic very relaxing and just a very chill song to open up with and it's also the second short uh shortest second longest track of the record and i do really like what wilco is doing here because the first track and the last track are both kind of like the epic the tail end of the book, I suppose, the book of this Yankee Hotel Foxtrot record. So I do really like what they're doing here. They have, you know, a spectacular intro and a spectacular outro, but we will get to that. Uh, then we have Camera, which was a very captivating uh, song. Um, you know, when I was thinking I want kind of like a rocking band, then Camera is kind of like the song for you. It's a very uh, in-your-face song. It's probably the heaviest Wilco will get on this record, honestly. And I do really like that they're, that they're doing this. Uh, one flaw is not even musically, but the one flaw that, flaw that I noticed with this song, and it, you know, again, it's not musically, because musically the song is great. But why is camera spelled with a K, though? I don't really get that. That's kind of like, you know, I'm not taking any points away from this record, because it is a great record. But I'm just kind of like, why is that with a K? I don't really get that, but sure. Then we get Radio Cure, and this kind of sounds like, you know, um, Wilco, you know, impersonating their best radio as the Cure impression. And I do think that it really works on both spectrums. Uh, it starts off with a bit of a Cure kind of vibe, and then later goes on a bit more with a radio ad vibe. So I do really like what they're doing right here. It's, it is really interesting to say the least. Very mellow song, very chill. Reminds me a lot of those two bands. <coughs> it was a good job Wilco for doing that. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a very diverse, very emotional song and I thoroughly enjoyed it once more. Then we get pretty much the two catchy songs on the record back to back. We get War on War, which is a very, very catchy track. I definitely get why this was the only single for the album. A lot of conventional guitar riffs on this, on this track, a lot of great riffage on this track. Just a very fantastic, mellow, acoustic, catchy track. I really, lo I really loved it. 
it was just a very enjoyable song, you know, whereas the first three songs were a bit more experimental, a bit more, uh, you know, had some layers on them. I think War and War still had that, but it was kind of, it kind of takes the John Lennon, uh, you know, let's give peace a chance kind of vibe. It, it kind of has those vibes, I, I suppose. So I do really like that, that uh, Wilco is doing this right there. And it was our single, so I did really, truly really enjoy the single right there. It was very enjoyable and I loved it. And then we get Jesus Etc, which is basically the, the masterpiece of the band, I suppose. It is the centerpiece of the record or kind of the centerpiece. The next track is kind of the, that is technically the centerpiece of the record, but I want to say that Jesus Etc is the centerpiece since it is just such a perfect song to place in the middle and they kind of did it right there. Uh, whereas the you know the opening track and the middle track are kind of like the, the tail ends of, of the book Jesus etc is like that perfect page where every word is in place everything is in place every uh, sentence is in place just everything about the song is perfect the guitar riffs are fantastic it kind of sounds like a war on war kind of track you know it has the catchy conventional uh, you know, catchiness of that track uh, combined with the complex uh, elements of the, the till ends of the record. So I do really love that Jesus etc. Jesus etc. I can only even say the damn fucking song. That this track kind of has it all, honestly. It has the layers, it has the catchiness, it has the, the, cap, the captivating, -ness, if that is even a word, it captivates me. Uh, the title is genius. I mean, come on now. So this whole track is just fantastic, honestly. So yeah, I would say easily the best track of this record, but that is of course debatable. But I would say it is Wilco's, yeah, it is pretty much Wilco's best track that I've heard so far. I don't really think they're gonna top the song because this was simply brilliant. Then we got Ashes of American Flex, which was a very uh, captivating song. Very deep, another very deep song on this record. Very mellow again, very, um, just dark, depressing, moody. Uh, it's it's one of those songs that you really have to listen to for yourself since it is such a heavy song as in the feels. So definitely check it out. Uh, then we get Heavy Metal Drummer, which was uh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, we get kind of like a war on war vibe again with a bit more conventional drums and a bit more conventional guitar lines on this track. A uh, very, very accessible track, I would say. Very um, just commercial, catchy. It's way catchier than, you know, if you read the title, you think, oh, it's kind of like a heavy song, but it's actually one of the softest songs on the record. So that is quite a, um, you know, co coincidental, kind of an ironic kind of song pick, but I still love the lyrics on this track. Kind of talking about uh, you know this heavy metal drummer took my girl or you know uh, Mrs. Studio girl the heavy metal drummer I suppose you know your fucking Dave Lombardo's your uh, Nick Menza's your your Lars Ulrichs I suppose your heavy metal drummers Mike Portnoy if you want to call it metal yeah I would say he's metal so. Yeah, you know, uh, they don't mention those names, but I do like, you know, that they have a song on here called Heavy Metal Drummer. That's kind of, that's kind of funny, I suppose. Then we have I'm the, man, I'm, the man, I'm the Man Who Loves You. Um, yeah, you know, I still like every song on there, but if I have to pick a least favorite, this would probably be it. Uh, it's not per se a, a terrible track, but this is kind of like a sappy kind of love song kind of track, which I'm not a big fan of. You know, unless it's spilled off ex exceptionally well, but this track honestly just didn't really catch my ear. Maybe, uh, you know, this record this record as a whole was a grower on me, you know, all, all of these tracks are growers on me. So Jeff Tweedy definitely has a kind of uh, growing kind of songwriting, whereas it doesn't really catch you. Uh, it doesn't really catch your ear the first time, but maybe, you know, on repeated listens, it does. So this is definitely the weakest track so far, but I still like it a lot, so there we go. So it doesn't really affect the rating again, it's just my least favorite. Uh, then we have Pot Kettle Black, which is probably, again, one of my personal favorites. Just a very dark, kind of sinister kind of vibe on this record. 
uh, very, you know, very depressed again, very low-key, very emotional too. This kind of reminds me of a Steven Wilson song again, you know, uh, also with Death Cap for Cutie, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so this is definitely a kind of a depressing, kind of moody song. Uh, I, I really love the title too, Pot Kettle Black. That's kind of, you know, witchy kind of stuff. It kind of reminds me of that, so great, great title again. Very creative, very original. Now we get Poor Places, which was placed on Rolling Stones, you know, Place Places, which was placed on Rolling Stones' greatest songs of the decades, I believe. Uh, the alternative music website, yeah, yeah, Rolling Stone. Yeah, yeah, 147, so that is pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, or, or uh, Pitchfork, I believe, I'm not sure. But uh, one of the two, and Poor Place is definitely an exceptional song. It's just very, uh, it, it is kind of like the compilation song of the record. It kind of takes all the best parts of the album yet that you've heard so far and just kind of takes a, um, or just kind of makes an ultimate song out of this. So this is definitely an exceptional song of the record. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of like everything that I've heard so far, the catchiness, the conventionalness uh, of the record, if that is a word, the complex arrangements, the progressive elements, the country roots. There's a little bit of country in here, but not a lot. Like, I don't really remember the country vibe that this record had. I, ca I kind of think that it was on the beginning of the record and that was kind of it, honestly. It has a little bit of a country twang to it, but... Or no, 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 uh, you know, if you go to the band page, then it says they're alternative country in a way, but they're not country on this record, so there we go, they're, they, they do uh, collaborate with country artists from here to there, on some records, you know, some collaboration records, so there we go, and then we get the last track, which is Reservations, and this is another favorite of mine, uh, just a fantastic song, it's very, and again, mellow, it's very down to earth, it's just very uh, depressing again. I do, I, do, uh, I do kind of sound like a broken record at this point, but I don't really mean it though. You know, this record is very um, complex, it is filled with layers, it's the longest track of the record, it's almost an epic, it is kind of an epic, epic for rock. Well, you know, rock can be long too, so I guess it's almost an epic. So this track is perfectly close out of the record. It's just a very like moody kind of end credit song that is seven minutes long. But I do, do really love that this track is a bit more mellow, a bit more poppy in a way. So it's kind of like dark chamber pop, kind of like progressive pop in a way. So I really love the arrangement on this track. So overall this album was amazing. Um, yeah, I have to say though that it didn't really catch my ear instantly, but whenever I, you know, dissect it right now and whenever I do listen to it I do really love the composition and the songwriting and just everything about the record I do really love it um, it was you know it is on um, on masterpiece reviews uh, by consequence of sounds it is placed uh, very low on the list like, like bottom, it is placed on the bottom of the list but it still is on there it is uh, in the 2012 version, the 2012 version of Rolling Stones, greatest albums of all time, and it's placed 493rd. So that's not high, but they it is on there. The record is on there. So that is still really impressive, I would say. Um, yeah, this record is just overall fantastic. I think that I pretty much enjoyed every song on the record with, um, well, I just enjoy every song on the record, but I'm the man who loves you is my least favorite song because it's just kind of, you know, it's kind of cliche in my opinion, but that's really the only song that's, you know, out of mind. And even then, the album is still fantastic, so I'm gonna give this thing a 10 out of 10. With that track being my least favorite, but yeah, you know, if it comes from, I don't, I don't mind it. If I had to choose a least favorite, that would be it, but I still like the song, so there you go. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the record in the comments down below. Um, I, I believe I didn't say it yet, but this is requested by last guy, like last minute, and I thought, hey, I, I was trying to get into Wilco, so why not react to it or review it, I suppose. So, thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe if you didn't say it already. Uh, do all those things. Um, just trying to milk it to 50 minutes. 
Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Uh, try Wilco, they are a great band.